Well hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm sure you can guess given the title what this particular video is going to be about. I've just found out, or recently found out a few days ago, that I would be graduating with a first class degree from my undergraduate course at Newcastle University, which is obviously really exciting. So uh, very quick information for those that don't know, I have been studying, or have finished studying now, a three-year undergraduate degree in cellular and molecular biology at Newcastle University, so it's northeast England. I graduate uh, in about a week, so that's when I will go and kind of formally graduate and receive my degree parchment that confirms that. But yeah, by some miracle I've managed to come out with first class honours, would you believe it? So what, what that means is that um, for anyone who's not familiar with the way the UK uh, honours degree classification system thing works. Um, basically your your average score as a percentage is collated over a fixed period and this might be uh, over the last two years of your three-year degree with some weighting in place. So for example in my case uh, my average was calculated between my second year of study and my final year which was this year but it was 25% weighting towards the second year and 75% weighting towards the final year. This varies enormously by course and by institution. But uh, so in my case, it just meant that virtually the bulk of the weight was on was on third year. Um, first year did not count for anything as long as you pass. I think that's just so you can settle into university. Then you start to become assessed in second year and then it's kind of all on the third year, at least in my case. And the way that the classifications are handled is a first class honours, which is the highest kind of formally recognised category, is 70% or more. Um, I think this can be awarded uh, if you got 69.5% or higher, it would round up to 70 and you, you'd be awarded a first class degree at the end. Um, a 2-1 or an upper second class honours is 60% and then a 2-2, two -two, lower second class honours, 50%, and so on from there. And uh, in my case, in order to achieve my offer for Warwick Medical School, uh, which I'm going to in September, I needed to achieve a 2-1. So I needed to get 60% uh, overall uh, in order to, to kind of satisfy the conditions of the offer and move on. Uh, thankfully, um, I'm one step above that. Uh, and I've I ended I just scraped it my my final score was seventy point six percent would you believe it but they they round to the nearest percentile mark so my my final score as it comes out will be seventy one percent so I'm just into the low ends of the first class bracket but you know it all counts rightly or wrongly and I'm 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 pleased. But as it goes with first class degrees, there are a couple things that I want to get out of the way, right? Do I think, personally, that having a first class degree will have any substantial impact on my life? I don't know, um, is the answer. What I have heard, and what my opinion is, is that it's much better to hold a 2 on or a strong, you know, mid-strong 2 on and have decent work experience than a first and no experience. I think that's absolutely correct. If you have the choice between, or rather if you have to make a choice, between studying all the time, spending your life in the library, right, and not going out and getting any skills, be it work experience or, you know, lab experience or voluntary work or whatever, uh, in order to get your first, at that point it's probably not worth it. I, I was lucky, I appreciate that by some stroke of luck, because again, I need to put this out there, I know that I did not work, you know, ridiculously hard all the time. There were times when I slacked off. Where I think I got lucky was that I managed to do well on things that were worth more. So my dissertation, for example, which is worth four times as much as most of the other courses that I was taking, um, I managed to get 75%. I, I ended up with an 80% score for my actual dissertation report, which I was super pleased with, don't get me wrong. Um, 
but and I did less well in the other marked elements of it so I ended up with 75 for that but because it was worth four times as much as any of the other courses it's like getting four lots of 75 which obviously goes a long way towards bringing your average up above 70 so I think it's things like that where I did look out right I'm lucky and I've had multiple people say to me supervisors um, people that run projects and things like that that it is much much more valuable to have decent experience and I will also say I did not set out to get a first at all I set out to get into medical school um, and at least where, where I'm going a first was not a requisite for that it may be helped I, I don't know I had to put my predictive grade down I was predicted a first class degree maybe it helped with my application maybe it didn't I don't know uh, if it did great but just thankfully by by various strokes of luck kind of coming off together I have ended up with a first class degree result and um, I think significant work experience through doing things like the iGEM project voluntary work working with the newspaper um, at the union getting involved with politics things like that I feel like a rounded individual and if I had to make a choice between those two sets of things you know, if they said you can have all that life experience or you can have a first class degree, I'd, I'd take the experience any day. I do realise it's an area of contention as well. I, you know, a lot of people will say having a first over a 2-1 makes no difference. A lot of people will equally say having a first does make a lot of difference. I'm not convinced particularly. Um, for me, as far as I'm concerned, I think probably having a 2-1 instead of a 2-2 two, two, probably makes a lot of difference in terms of hiring statistics but you know what I think the difference between a first and a 2-1 particularly when competitors have a, a good range of life skills I think the difference is probably negligible although I'm really interested in interviewing graduate employers to find out what they want to say about that and that is an investigation that I am going to do at some point but yes, before I ramble on too much longer, I will make a series of videos and articles. Well, I won't make them, I will write them. You understand what I mean. I will produce a series of articles on if you really want to push for a first class degree or do things like getting a first on your dissertation, things like that. I will be putting out content that, that caters to people interested in that because for some people it will be really important, understandably. and. Obviously, if I have knowledge that I think might help you, I'm more than happy to put that out there. But yes, in about a week, I will be graduating. The 11th of July, I'll be vlogging that day. Do go and check out my Back to Newcastle vlog that I put out recently. Um, it was a really daunting experience, and I found it really, really awkward, particularly filming myself in public. Um, but I need to get used to that, because I'm going to be recording my time at Warwick most days if I can. So that's where I'm going to wrap this up for now. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Take care, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.